My name is Brian St. Borowska, and I am the head coach of the Minnesota Rocker. I've kind of been here since the inception of the team over back in um, September of 2019. Hey guys, uh, Jake Reppin Troba, director of esports strategy at Version 1 and assistant coach and data analyst for the Minnesota Rocker. I've been here probably like two weeks less than Brian. Um, so I've been here since the beginning as well. and. You know, before that, played a played a little bit of COD with Brian back in like, I don't know, <laughs> 2015, 2016. Right, for sure. Uh, hi guys, it's uh, Eli Standy Benz, and uh, I'm the new rookie, the SMG for uh, the Minnesota Rocker, and I'm pretty new here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Um, you made quite the de the debut for yourself a couple weeks ago against uh, a formidable opponent in Chicago. Do you want to talk about? Uh, you know, the, your your first game, right? The the nerves you had going into it, and the elation after. Uh, yeah, sure, I can talk about that. So, going into that match against Optic, it just I didn't really have too much nerves just because uh, how the team was performing already. Like we kind of were like the team was slacking a little bit, but obviously I'm coming in and doing my best to turn things around. So, I mean, I just came in there. Just was comfortable and just did what I uh, thought uh, we needed to do to win. So I came in there, did my thing, and uh, after it felt great knowing that uh, I played well against a really good team. For sure, I uh, and and it led to some momentum, right? You guys are three and zero over the last couple of matches with a with another one coming up uh, tomorrow as of this recording. Um, what I, you know, it's been like you know this league is hard right so it's it, it comes with ups and downs but like brian i'd be curious to hear like you know what it, in these last couple of matches what have you been telling the team like you know how have you been hyping them up what has this momentum felt like yeah i mean it, it feels great to come out three you know we really didn't expect to you know come out this strong off the bat you know fresh off a roster change we, we thought it would just be good to kind of you know get the practice in versus these top teams and kind of just continuously grow from there but um we just exceeded expectations off the start and you know we put ourselves in a position where we're starting in winter semifinals of the tournament uh which you know best place you can be sets you up to you know go and win the whole thing because you only have to win uh three matches in a row so i mean i think we're kind of just firing on all cylinders right now there's still some improvements we need to make and you know we're all aware of that but it's a learning process every single day and with how the league is right now the competition is so so high i mean the last place team you know the number 12 team can very well upset the number one team in the league it's just you know there's so many good players the talent pool is so spread around and, you know no match is ever going to be an easy one yeah. Curious about that with with the talent pool and uh, you know COVID going on the, the pandemic. How are you mm -hmm. doing scouting? How did you find someone like Standy to to slot in here and and you know kind of turn your team around? Yeah, I, I've kind of followed the North American challenger scene closely for a few years. Uh, I mean, always as a player, I always kind of kept up with the amateur scene, talked to a lot of players there, you know, being a player myself, I, I played through there, I know how it is. So I always kind of followed the North American scene, kind of looking for those players who are next up. It's a lot harder right now to uh, kind of look overseas in terms of Europe and Australia, just due to how hard the visa process is. If you really want to get someone <laughs> from uh, over there, it's just not really feasible until like the very tail end of the season or like next season if you like start the visa process now so um you know looking at na is definitely the most viable option and eli's kind of someone that caught my eye since early last year before he even uh joined triumph i saw a lot of promise in him and you know he just continuously grew throughout the year last year ultimately winning the north american challengers finals uh you know at the end of the season so he he's been on my radar he always bring always brought like a real smg gameplay and i just think his communication skills and you know the way he conducts himself within a team is, is what caught me the most and you know i was a little surprised he was kind of on the market as long as he was and jake were you you know when you were looking at you know kind of your strategies for the team and all that were you looking smg was that something you were really looking for or did did eli just kind of stand out as this this pure talent that you wanted to kind of roll in yeah, I think it's more so the former. Uh, we knew since the beginning of the season, if there was a change that was to be made, it would be for an SMG player. Uh, we were like hyper actively analyzing the challenger scene, like Brian mentioned, <clears throat> for a player like Eli. Uh, and, and I mean, he was someone we had interested in 
since before the 2021 season started. Um, so I guess a little bit of both. One, he was clearly a standout talent to us, regardless of role. Um, but most importantly, we knew that if there was to be a change, we'd be bringing a fast SMG in. And I think it just so happened that we were able to find exactly what we needed in Eli Benz down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd also like to say, like, finding a high caliber SMG player is definitely the hardest thing in the league. It's, it's probably the highest skill role in Call of Duty because, you know, an SMG player is kind of pushing up the most on the map. They're, you know, influencing the game the most. There's a lot of good players who, you know, can go and pick up that AR role. But uh, the pool for top, top, top level SMG players is a lot more limited. So being able to, you know, find one of them and kind of bring them into the roster is uh, key. Damn. High skill. You, you like hear that, Eli? High skill, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you like, you're young, 19 smile. years young. What was your first Call of Duty? I, I'm curious. When did you start playing playing these games? Uh, my first Call of Duty was Black Ops One when I was like, I think I was like 11 or 12. I just I just got into middle school. I mean, back then I was just playing with my friends from school and just stuff sure. like that. So I mean, that's kind of where it all began. Just when did I, you know you were elite tier? Uh. I mean, I always knew I was really good because, like, when I'd play with my friends, uh, I'd always, uh, I was, uh, I would always be that guy that they want to play with just because I was really good when I was younger. <laughs> but like, as time went on and like I played in like a bunch of tournaments and got older, probably when I was like 16 or 17, I uh, kind of decided that like, hey, maybe I can uh, see what I can make out of this and see if I can probably make a run to become professional. So, what uh, what made you choose SMG? Uh. I just like the SMG role like just the best. I just feel like it's one of the most like like Brian was saying like it's a really important role but it's also like really like fun to me. Like I feel like you're always just kind of running around doing your thing like there's little like spark in your gameplay when you're an SMG player. Not more so like an, uh, just an AR locking down lanes like as an SMG you can like you can take you can just there's a lot more stuff you can do on the map as an SMG and I just feel like it's a really fun uh, it's a really fun role to use. For sure. So I really enjoy it. Eli, what would you say to people <clears throat> who are looking to pursue professional Call of Duty? Like, you know, what were steps that you took to really set yourself up for success and, and jump on the world stage with this? Um, a few uh, word of uh, advice that I'd give others is like, you got to stay determined and you got to realize that everyone that starts, they aren't the best right away. Like it takes a lot of time and a lot of learning. And that just comes from like really taking knowledge from other people and the people that teach you how to play and you know, watching a lot of professional players play. Uh, I think that uh, when I first started, obviously I wasn't that great, but I had a lot of resources around me that I learned from. And I, I kind of just trusted my gut in a lot of situations because obviously when I first started playing, I didn't have this big name. I wasn't really like super known by everyone. I was just kind of like some kind of gamer kid on Twitter. And from there, you just kind of have to reach out to people, make connections. And like, I think sometimes you got to drop your pride a little bit. And just like, if you really want to play with like better people or like better players, you got to go out there and like attempt to get that yourself. You can't kind of wait for opportunities to come to you. Sometimes you got to, you got to go out there and uh, get some stuff yourself. For sure. You gotta get, get your opportunities, get your chances. So. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about CDL is we're we're not afraid to to talk a little, you know, you know, get the hype going a little bit. And you know, <laughs> I've been I've been paying attention. There's been some disrespect towards the Minneapolis or Minnesota Rocker. Um, how do you guys feel as kind of an underdog, and especially with the the heat that you guys have been building up the last uh, couple of week couple of matches? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like being an underdog is kind of always the best position you can be in because, you know, teams don't really expect as much against you. They may, you know, uh, slip up in the vetoes a little bit just because, you know, they're trying to, you know, play around their own strengths uh, opposed to yours. So it's always good being an underdog, just, um, uh, and, and it just feels awesome kind of, you know, earning that respect from other people and just proving them wrong. Yeah, just, you know, proving people wrong is kind of, always the most exciting thing about being in the underdog when you're like the top dog winning kind of just uh becomes habit obviously that's the position we want to get into in the future but you know exceeding those expectations and then you know running with them is one of the best feelings in esports for sure eli how about for you uh kind of uh being the underdog kind of feels great i mean obviously like uh, brian said like 
I do want to attain a position one day where I am winning constantly and consistently. But being an underdog, I feel like it kind of relieves a little bit of pressure, honestly, because people don't always expect you to perform like super, super duper well. And it definitely relieves a tiny bit of pressure, but also uh, it definitely like teams definitely underestimate you a little bit. They don't expect you to come out with some fire. They don't expect you to come out with a different kind of gameplay and uh, game style because like even for me when I joined the team I'm sure a lot of players didn't really know like professionals didn't know that much about me and uh, possibly got caught off guard with like the plays I was making or uh, what I kind of do on the map because in the CDL a lot of these players have been playing like together for a while so like they kind of learn some of their tendencies and like how they like to play and what they like to do and kind of having like a new face on a team can uh really catching people off guard and uh, being the underdog kind of feels great because it it kind of ignites a fire inside of me that I want to prove other people wrong that bad so and Jake uh, you know being an underdog you know I think you know all teams are turning their heads towards you now you know with the sex the success you found sure. do you keep rolling with with the strategy that's that's been working or, or do you have to change things up anticipating that they they're going to be kind of you know looking at you differently I mean, the game's constantly evolving. I'd say we change up the looks we give teams regardless of situation. We were doing it when we first brought Eli in. We were doing it in the Dallas series and we did it in the Seattle series. Um, like our goal as coaches is to make our team as, you know, the as unpredictable as possible. I will say that there's something to be said about a team that has nothing to lose and they can just go in and take all the risk um there really is no pressure if you lose the whole world you thought you were going to and if you win all of a sudden you're the new kids on the block and it's the coolest feeling ever i think having that feeling and being the new kids on the block is important and it's sort of rejuvenated our team but we've sort of moved past celebrating that and put most of our brain power toward how do we stay here and how do we continue to get better so I'd say it was a very cool feeling. I think proving people wrong is always awesome. Uh, but I mean, now we're here and we need to make sure we stay here. For sure. Let's let's look ahead till tomorrow. Uh, as of this recording, you guys don't know who you're playing yet, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll find out uh, after the first match today. Okay, cool. Do you have a hope for who you're going to play? Um, Not in particular. I mean, we already played Dallas once, really close 3-2 series. New York is also... Um, I mean, I, I feel like they're kind of still regarded as an underdog with, you know, even with how good they've been all season. New York's a really, really I scary agree. team. So I, I think I think that's going to be probably the closest series of the day. I don't really have a preference on who we play out to because I think their map pools are, you know, pretty similar. So, um, you know, whatever hand we're dealt is, you know, one we're going to play. For sure. Eli, how about you? Are you how are you prepping for for tomorrow? What are you what are you focusing on? Uh, I'm just focusing on the little things that uh, we've been preparing the last few days. Uh, as a player, you just got to find the little things you want to improve on every day and just keep getting better as a team, keep uh, getting new strategies, stuff like that. But uh, for who I want to play, uh, I don't, I, I'm down to play either team, but I kind of want to play a New York just because uh, we already played Dallas and uh, I kind of want to, I want to play every single team, so. You want to, it's that Kobe mentality. You want to beat every team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since you're new, uh, where did your name come from? What's the inspiration be behind Standy? Um, I wouldn't say I have a big inspiration behind my name. Uh, I was just younger when I was around probably like 14 years old. I was just going for uh, so called uh, OG gamer tags, if you guys know what that is, like the cool yeah. names and. Uh, I originally had the name Stand F U L, so it was like Stand Full, and then uh, I joined a gaming clan that was named Cloak. They're just some. It was just like a little. It was just some little uh, team with bunch, a bunch of my friends, and I joined this team with my friends, and I just changed my name to Standy. I don't really know what exactly sparked within my brain when I was 14, but I just kind of made my name Standy, and ever since I just kind of stuck with it, and I just never really changed it. So here we are. And obviously you play Call of Duty around the clock, but what else? What are some of your, your gaming favorites? Uh, I kind of, I enjoy playing Minecraft. I kind of <laughs> like playing Minecraft, uh, games like Osu. When I was younger, I used to play a lot of sports games, but uh, I kind of strayed away from it a little bit as I got older. Um, I also have a Nintendo Switch. I like to play some uh, Nintendo games. They're uh, really fun. And other than that, those are probably like some of the games I uh, use my time when I'm not playing Call of Duty. This may be a, a moot point because you guys have now been playing for, for a little bit here though, but like 
What is that transition like from game to game? <clears throat> Excuse me, from game to game. Modern Warfare is vastly different than Black Ops. Like, yeah. um, what are the what are the challenges with that and the frustrations with that? Um, I mean, the first few months of every year is just a grind. I mean, we're kind of used to it at this point. I mean, I've been uh, around the competitive Call of Duty scene since Call of Duty Four, so. It just feels like every other year to me at this point now, but uh, when the new game comes out, everyone's just trying to learn it. Uh, the meta, you know, from week two, which is kind of generally when we start practicing compared to one month after that is always completely drastic. There's always going to be an overpowered gun at the beginning of the game that, you know, teams are running four of. They're trying to learn the spawns and it's just uh, a big learning process early in the year. But, you know, once things start to flesh out a little bit uh, and then then you kind of see what teams rise above the rest. Yeah, you're also seeing, I mean, this year started later than any year in Call of Duty history in terms of competitive season. So like, like our home series last year was what, in January, right? Yeah. When we hosted mm -hmm. opening weekend and this year, the first matches, I believe, were mid -February. in February. Yeah, mid-February. So there's that much more time to learn the game. And in early days of Call of Duty, every additional day you have to learn is so crucial. So you watch teams be... Like, like nearly an entire month more advanced than they were in the beginning mm -hmm. of last year, which is interesting. And I actually really like that events are starting um, or, you know, sort of matches are starting a little later because it really does give teams time to learn the game instead of just basing the early season off raw skill and who yeah. shoots straighter because teams haven't had the opportunity to sort of study or completely master a game yet. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because back in the day, like our first tournament every year, like our first major tournament was generally either like three weeks after the game came out or like a month after the game came out. And the team that won that initial tournament every year was usually the team with like the most just raw skill off the bat. So those tournaments were always kind of like a wash per se. Like it was cool to win them, but um, at the end of the day, the teams that won that usually would have a bit of a drop off going throughout the year. Uh, going on top of that, like learning a new game, I think something that like for the viewers out there, like whoever's watching, like if they want to like, I think changing to a new game every year is like, it's really important to like learn the maps uh, more so per se and like the really good spots because uh, eventually everyone's going to know what gun to use. Uh, so like, I feel like it's really important to run around the maps and just get those little nerd spots, learn, uh, learn how you want to learn where the hard points are, learn where the situations are and I think uh, learning maps and beginning of uh, new games is uh, really, really important. And then uh, obviously like using knowing what gun to use and uh, coming on board with movement and uh, stuff like that will eventually come along. But you definitely got to being aware of your surroundings when you're playing is uh, super, super important. So it's definitely a really uh, a good tip for uh, people that want to like play every year and are playing a new game and want to relearn it. And Jake and Brian, you ever get in there and throw down with the young guys, show them what's up? Uh, at the beginning the of the year, yeah. at, at the beginning of the year, we both play a lot, and then you know after those initial few months, once you know the game fleshes out a little bit, then um, yeah. my time is allocated to pretty much strictly watching. In the beginning of the year, Brian and I were beating full challengers teams in S and D tournaments. <laughs> yeah, we actually were. Uh, I remember that. Go. Put yourself on the we, roster. Uh, I <laughs> Come know. out of retirement. <laughs> and then, like the highlights of our days now, when the season progresses, is like playing three v three raid hard points to warm the team up. But other than that, I, like, done I, that in a while, I know I can't even like I don't remember the last time I was playing cod because we are literally watching it 24 7 even when the team's not practicing we're yeah. watching or going over vod like i can't even remember the last time i've played i played something in the last month but because i've been in texas kind of living at a yeah. yeah living at a hotel for a little bit i don't have like a setup or anything here so it's just it's just watching every day for me currently any idea when the team's going to get back together or is the you know are the players you know are you in the the facility or what's yeah, the kind of uh, the basis the, right now the, on all the that players are all in dallas texas which is kind of why i came down here uh all the team flew down here early in the season because we knew the year was going to be online so all the players kind of wanted to get to texas you know be at the most um fair competitive standpoint in terms of online gameplay so they all moved down here uh Pretty much the second we signed Eli, we flew him down here. He's been living at a hotel for a little bit. We finally just got our apartment situated, moved in there, just waiting on, you know, some of the furniture to come. But we're kind of good in that aspect now. But yeah, all the players have been down here in Texas and, and moving in the next year, kind of when, you know, COVID dies down a lot more and, and we start uh, 
bringing in LAN events. Then we plan on, you know, relocating the team back to Minneapolis where we can practice from our facility and our office every single day. But with this year being online, uh, just, you know, having the team out in Texas was the most viable move, as you saw a lot of other uh, CDL franchises do this year as well. Nice. Because I, I would imagine you miss LAN pretty heavily, right? Online always has its quirks. Yeah, a lot. It's just always so fun traveling around and just seeing all the other players at every single tournament. Yeah. That's definitely what I miss the most. And, you know, it's just such a more even playing standpoint. Definitely. Yeah, I that that first weekend in the Armory, man, in Minneapolis was I was electric and, and a good you know idea of what this can be when uh, when things are get, get back to normal a little bit. So cool. Ryan, you got anything else? No, uh, best of luck in yeah. the matches coming forward. Can't yeah. wait to watch, see how, see how it goes. And uh, welcome to the league, Eli. It's yeah. been fun to watch so far. If people Thank don't you. know you before, they will now. That's for that's for damn <laughs> sure. So, gentlemen, keep repping Minnesota. Love to see it. Love to see those wins, getting those underdog victories. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you next time. So, thanks for joining us. And then we'll- yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah.